So famously, as you recall, Plato had suggested that our soul can be understood as having three parts. That we have a rational part, which he represents sometimes as a human being, sometimes as a charioteer. That we have what he calls the spirited part, which he represents sometimes as a cooperative horse, sometimes as a lion. And that we have, in addition, an appetitive part, which he represents sometimes as a wild horse and sometimes as the multi-headed beast. Plato's suggestion is that a certain kind of happiness is available to us if we get these parts into line. He writes, one is just, who does not allow the various parts within him to meddle with each other. He regulates well what is his own and rules himself, puts himself in order, and harmonizes the three parts of himself like three limiting notes on a musical scale. And have, from having been many things, from having been as you are, pulled in two directions. Pulled in the direction of keeping the internet off, and pulled in the direction of checking your Facebook page. Pulled in the direction of going to the library and doing your homework, and pulled in the direction of hanging out in your suite and talking to your suite mate. From having been many things, pulled in the direction of what reason tells you to do, and pulled in the direction of what spirit or appetite tells you to do, you become entirely one, moderate and harmonious. So the Platonic ideal of the well-structured soul is one regulated by reason in which spirit and appetite are subjected to reason's mandates. Now what I want to give you now is basically a 30 second, well, five minute overview of the plot of Plato's Republic in books sort of two, three, four, nine. Okay, so the story goes as follows. Plato's trying to tell us what the human soul is like. And in honor of the weather, we'll represent the human being like this. And he points out, as I've just noticed, noted, that the human soul has three parts. It's got a rational part, it's got a spirited part, and it's got a part that is full of appetites, appetitive. And you can see the human being, the lion, and the multi-headed beast in Plato's famous image there. But in order to understand what is good for the human being, Socrates suggests at the end of the discussion in book two, which we read for last class, that the best way to understand what it is that's good for the tripartite human being is to think about what would be good for a city that is structured in the same way. What societal structures can help us understand things about the internal structures of human beings. So he proposes the famous city-state analogy, whereby corresponding to the part of the soul that he calls appetite are citizens of the city that he calls workers, or uh, people who do the day-to-day -day work of the city and who take their joy and pleasure from the pleasures of the body and of the appetites. There are soldiers, those who defend the city and serve as its defenders in military con contexts who are motivated by honor. And there are, in addition, philosophers or guardians, those who live the life of the mind. And you'll notice who gets to end up at the top in this story. So the idea is that in order to understand the four cardinal Greek virtues in the context of the individual, we will be helped by thinking about where those virtues can be found in the city. And we can then map what it is that we've learned from looking at the problem writ large in the context of society, we can map that onto what would be the case in the context of the problem writ small, the individual. So 
Plato's Socrates points out that there are four cardinal virtues, and you know these from your reading. The first of these is wisdom. And the wisdom of the city and of the individual is to be found in its rational part. OK, those should be, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there is courage. And the courage of a city or of an individual is to be found in its spirited part. All right, they're dancing. And then there are two virtues, the distinction between which is important in some contexts, but not for ours. And those are the virtues of moderation and justice. And the suggestion here is that just as a city is moderate and just when the relations among the people in it are proper, so too is an individual moderate or just when the relations among its parts are appropriate and proper. That is, moderation and justice involve a certain kind of harmony among the parts. So that's the platonic picture 